Okay. Good evening and welcome to the Wiltshire Business Club uh, monthly meeting, which now takes place on air. And each month we interview a member of the uh, club. And this month we're talking to Dan Nelson. Welcome, Dan. Hello. So how long have you been involved Hello. with it? Uh, I think pretty much since it started. Um, right. Because I... I met Phil and um, Roland before I started in the Royal Chocolate in my previous life doing IT. That's over five um, years ago. So, yeah, absolutely. So it must be six, seven years, however long it is since it started, and it must be fair. I was probably, if not the first meeting, one of the early meetings because right. I met them on the, on the full networking circuit. Yeah, because the thing is, it's, it's, a, it's a private club, isn't it? The two of them run it together. And yep. they managed to keep everybody together uh, on the uh, forum in Facebook and the live meetings as well. Absolutely. And, I mean, over the years, they've, I've seen them do a huge amount of effort with, with the club. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've, I've been – back in the day, I used to go to a lot of the face-to-face -face meetings for a good number of years yep. um, and try to be active on the group as much as I can. And um, yeah, um, uh, yeah, they both put an awful lot in, and um, I think the results show, show for themselves. Indeed, indeed, there's a group of people helping each other mm. on a daily basis, and uh, both the, the, the guys running it are, are just totally involved. Roland uh, on, yeah. on a daily basis, getting involved in helping people. Absolutely. I mean, prime example is I, I had uh, a query today which I put out on the club and I've had a couple of suggestions on potential suppliers for some packaging. Yeah. So uh, it, it is one of my go-to places that if, if I've got a query or something to do with my business or business that yeah. I'm looking for information, support, advice or suggestions, it's one of the, the places I always make sure I post to um, and I always keep my head in and see if I can help others. Um, so, yeah, it's, it works well. Brilliant. Right, okay. Well, that's the Ultra Business part, uh, Club, and we'll be coming back to that later um, as we have a general discussion. But the first part of our session today is all about chocolate, which is a wonderful <laughs> topic. It's very close um, to my heart. <laughs> yes, yes, well, you're wearing the shirt. You're wearing the shirt. Well, there's chocolate, there's hope. I think that's a brilliant slogan. Um, how did it all begin? How did you get involved uh, it's a question that we get asked quite a lot and um paula and i have been on a, a journey of discovery around health nutrition diet and what have you for probably 10 years now i would, okay. I would guess um through that journey ourselves we discovered raw chocolate maybe seven eight years ago mm -hmm. um and pretty instantly fell in love with it because it, it just divine compared to normal sugar laden typical conventional chocolate it's yeah. just a, yeah. we both loved it and fell in love with it very quickly um and from there yeah we just enjoyed it a lot for maybe a couple of years and then unbeknown to me paula had started looking because she wanted to make her own and started looking online for kits and equipment ingredients and what have you and then three times in one week she got messages from the universe if that's okay. if you believe in those sort of things um she was she was supposed to be going to a talk on um on, i think it was over on i think it was on the 2012 thing that was coming yeah. up so she was supposed to be going on to a talk on that the person didn't turn up and someone gave a talk about raw chocolate um, someone else the same week said to her, oh, you should be selling raw chocolate and root superfoods randomly. And then yeah. someone else mentioned something similar. Um, and Paula listened to three messages. And I came home one day, and I remember it as clear as day, walking into the kitchen, and she sat there and just turns around and says, I think we should make a raw chocolate kit. So I go, okay, how did you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we didn't really talk about it that evening. And I woke up the following day, and it was the first week of October, and I went, hmm, we need to do this before Christmas, because I kind of had this connection chocolate yep. Christmas that yep. I think a lot of people do. Yep. Um, and so we we did, and we went from idea to launch in just under four weeks, wow. um, with no background in, IT, um, in food production, product manufacturing, product design, anything. Um, my background was IT. 
callers yeah. was sort of holistic therapies, massage, shiatsu, that sort of thing. So neither of us really had any experience in the field other than liking to eat the stuff. Um, and yeah, we just went from idea three and a half weeks or so later, launched the website, went live with it, um, and sold the first batch of kits pretty much before they were ready and before anybody had seen them. And kind of went, hmm, right. onto something here okay. and just yeah. kept going. And here we are. <laughs> yeah, that, that was genuinely working from home in the kitchen, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to begin with, it was it, it really was just a, a, a random idea um, yeah. as much as anything. Um, I was still doing my IT and Paula was still doing some massage and what have you. And we sort of did this along the way and didn't have any spare cash. And say, so, oh, that's so hello, Tomo. Hello, Tomo. There we go. <laughs> hello, mate. <laughs> um, but managed to sort of cobble it together and yeah, sort of would turn our kitchen into a, a right. little production okay. line. So, yeah. yeah. And we arranged everything and, and did a production run and then life got back yeah. to normal and then you did a production run and then life got back to normal. So it was a lot of... Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. And uh, I think we were based at home for about three and a half years um, yeah. in total. And probably for the last year of that, it was an absolute struggle. I mean, literally our house was taken over every single room except for our bedroom and the, the bathroom had boxes everywhere. It was right. boxes on boxes on boxes. And it was just, it was a struggle. And then we had a storage container for all the extra stuff that wouldn't fit in the yeah. house. Um, and yeah, it's, I, I don't know how we coped to be honest with you, but we did. And ended up getting a little chocolate factory. And, yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> especially before we, we move forward, the, the first question that anybody has who's been brought up on Cadbury's and Terry's <laughs> is, is, is what is raw chocolate and why? Why? Okay. Well, that's another thing we get asked a lot of, as you can imagine. Um, to me, and I think pretty much sort of universally what people consider to be raw chocolate, it comes down to two things. Okay. Um, the first first aspect is the cacao, the chocolate that you use. So conventionally what they do when, uh, when they're making chocolate, after the beans have been fermented and initially dried, they'll roast the beans. That roasting process is obviously done at high temperatures, destroys loads of nutrients, changes the flavour profile of the cacao. And it's kind of at the point of roasting, it stops being called cacao and then becomes called cocoa. They just swap the O's and the A's around. Um, so that destroys a load of nutrients. Then in the process of making chocolate, there's a process called conching, which is again processing at high temperatures, destroying more nutrients. Then there's also um, when you're extracting the cocoa butter from the yeah. from the cocoa powder, again, really high temperatures and in fact high pressure as well to do it big, large scale. Mm -hmm. um, and all these processes destroy nutrients. Um, and cacao is a hugely, hugely nutrient dense um, foodstuff. Um, it's one of the richest sources of magnesium. It's high in vitamins, minerals, antioxidants all sorts of stuff it's absolutely loaded with things so the processing destroys a lot of nutrients so that's the one aspect okay. and the other side is when you make chocolate conventionally people use a high gi so that's high glycemic index sort of refined sugar so typical normal cane sugar mm -hmm. um and what that means is that when you eat it you get that real energy rush and then you get the crash yeah it's, it's doing that with your energy levels um which isn't good for our, our, our our bodies our bodies just aren't designed to deal with those sorts of extremes um and then when they make it they put in all sorts of things fillers and packers and different oils and all sorts of stuff so you end up with something that's not really got much chocolate in okay it's loaded with bad sugars bad fats all yeah. the sorts of junk e numbers and all this sort of stuff and it's just as far away removed as you can possibly get from the original source so with raw chocolate, our beans are never roasted. Um, okay. The processing to extract the butter and powder is done on a stone ground on the low temperatures. Um, and then when you make the chocolate, you don't use any dairy, no refined sugars, no added, no added junk fats or anything like that. If you do any use any oils, it will be a little bit of uh, virgin coconut oil, which is mm -hmm. a really good oil, fantastically good for our bodies. Um, so you're just getting 
the maximum nutrients and you're not adulterating it with all your junk. So it's, you kind of win on both levels. Yes. And then to top it all, it tastes amazing. It does. It does. <laughs> I can attest to that. Uh, we're, we're great fans. We're great fans. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Okay. So you, you, the first products that you actually made were the, the chocolate making kits. Uh, it was. In, encouraging people to make their own co- uh, chocolates. And you, yeah. those are still one of your good sellers. Uh, yeah. what, what sort of composers of the chocolate kit? Um, but this is what, one of the big reasons that we got into it. Paula wanted to make chocolate. She looked on wanted to make raw chocolate. She looked to try and find a kit, and none of the kits available had what we consider to be a critical component, and that's a chocolate mold. At right. best, you might get a little paper sort of paper cup thing, a load of those, which you use once and throw away. Yep. Um, or nothing at all. And Paula just thought, it's got to be easy. Let's do it. So, what we get in, what you get in the kit, you get raw cacao powder, cacao butter. And they're the, basically that's the the fat that's extracted from the cacao, and then all the residues ground into a powder. Okay. And you mix them back together, and yep. you can do them just like that, and you'll get chocolate, but it will, will be better because there'll be no sweetness to add into it. So, what we then add as the sweetener is something called sweet freedom, which is made of, um, of apples, carob, and grapes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a small, well, they are small, they're getting fairly big. Um, it's a UK company that makes those. Um, it's, they're extractive without any chemicals or enzymes or anything like that. So it's, uh, and uh, the critical thing there is it's very low GI, so you're getting a much smoother energy release. Yeah. Um, and then a chocolate mold. So we've got a proper silicon chocolate mold. Um, we've got a couple of different designs that come with the kits or as options for the kits. And then we've got a huge selection that we can add that people can buy. So you end up with some, you can make chocolate. Yep. It takes half an hour. It goes in the okay. fridge. Yep. Easy as that. Right. So you're making healthy chocolate in your own home, the quantity mm-hmm. you want, and half an hour and, and you're actually there. Yeah. Yeah. And the beauty of making it yourself, as well as having that experience of, uh, really connecting with the food because that's one thing that we're, we're we're very keen on and very passionate about is people connecting with food and i think that's the rise of raw chocolate yeah. it ties in with the rise of organic vegan and all these sorts of things people are starting to move away from the big mass-produced food sources and they're trying to get back to food to try and reconnect with it understand what it is what it does for them yes. um so you get the experience of making chocolate which is great fun kids love doing it um, but you can make it as sweet as you want. And what we often find is when people first start making chocolate, they'll make it quite sweet because they're used to that. Yep. But over, if they stick with it and keep making chocolate, speak to them six months later, almost always they'll be putting a considerable less amount of the sweet yep. freedom in there. And it'll be getting less and less sweet because their taste change. And they basically they stop being addicted to the sugar yep. and they start appreciating the flavours of the cacao, the flavor of the different sweeteners that you can use, because you can use other things. You could use agave syrup, you can use a really good raw honey, uh, maple syrup, things like this. They're not always as low GI as sweet freedom, but they're still better than a refined sugar, sugar because they're more natural. So once you've got the kits, you can experiment to, to your own taste. Absolutely. Now, one of the first products that you created uh, which would be nice to know the background too. You know what I'm going to say. Was your scrummy? <laughs> How did that come about? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Paula went on a course with someone called Anna Middleton, who lives in Bristol, and she's a fantastic um, raw food cook, raw food chef, um, and we like to think of it as the queen of raw cakes. She makes absolutely divine raw cakes. I've not come across anyone who can touch it, she, and she's lovely as well. Paula went to a course of hers uh, and learned a load of different techniques and some recipes and came back from that all excited and was playing around in the kitchen and this little thing emerged and we all fell in love with it and I think three of us were sat around the kitchen table one day munching away, having a cuppa and just going, oh, and one of us, could don't even remember who, but someone went, Oh, this is yummy, scrumming. We all went, ah, <laughs> that's what it's called. <laughs> that's, that's what we call a house moment. <laughs> exactly. An idea suddenly comes out of nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure in days past I'd have been in the bath doing that. <laughs> Eureka! 
<laughs> right. Okay. So yeah, it's just experimentation, and that's the beauty of sort of raw chocolate. When you sort of start looking and playing with it, you, you just experiment, try different things. You look at recipes and get inspired, and you never know what might come out of it. Right. And that brings on to it's on to your best-selling product, which is your drinking chocolate. Oh my best! I am. Um, I don't know. It, it no, may not be now. No, I, I actually, I, I think probably yummy, yummy scrummy is our best year-round seller. Um, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, our kits are fantastic in the run up to Christmas, in particular, but they, they go well all year round, but particularly in Christmas. Okay. Um, hot chocolate, the hot chocolate range. We've got three different flavors there, um, and again, they came out of. Not like having got into raw chocolate, it was like, oh, I can't eat, I can't have hot chocolate. It was like, I better make one, as you do. <laughs> so, came up and made a spice one, and that kind of was nice. And then went, well, let's make a plain one. Yeah. And then we we know the guys at um, Wiltshire Chili Farm, Jamie and his team. Um, and uh, we were chatting to him one day, and it was like, oh, tea hot chocolate. Jamie, can you give us some chili? And um, yeah, he gave, sorted us out with some of his finest work for chili. And um, yeah, we've got a fiery one now. And um, yeah, they, again, not too sweet um, and a variety of flavors. Um, and also, it's, it also gives people an idea of things what you can do with it when they see a tin of hot chocolate. And actually, they go, oh, and they may use that. And I get people who use a hot chocolate when making other things. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it can be used as an ingredient in its own right. Right. Okay. So we've covered uh, the chocolate kits, yummy scrummy, and the hot drinks. Is there anything else in the range? Um, we've got a complimentary bar to yummy scrummy that we're called. Yeah. Currently, it's called Chocomiga. Um, I don't know if that name's going to stick. I, it's. It, People have connected with Yummy Scrummy and people know yeah, about it. Yeah. Whereas Chocomiga, people seem to be having difficulty remembering. Um, but it's it's kind of similar to Yummy Scrummy, but kind of different. It's got yeah. different ingredients. It's more coconutty, more seedy and nutty. It's got a lot of, um, it's got hemp seeds and pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds, things like that. So it's got lots of amigas in, hence the name. Um, and uh, there's a, lots of coconut in. So it's uh, kind of lighter than Yummy Scrummy. Um, and then we've got, we do obviously the bagged ingredients to, if people start making chocolate, they can restock with ingredients. Um, so, and we do the cacao and we do coconut blossom sugar and all the nuts and seeds and all the sorts of things that we use oh. making yummy scrummy and chocomigo, we, we sell as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, oh, we do raw cacao yeah. nibs in a little grinder, um, all sorts of things and loads of chocolate molds, loads right. and loads of chocolate mold designs. At, at this point, I will, because I think we should, pop in a link to your website which shows where you are now uh, in terms of marketing. Now, you we, you talked earlier about you work in the kitchen, you've got boxes all around the house and you're sort of growing out of it and friends, you've got friends working in the kitchen as well and the home has become a chocolate factory. So you then decide to move out. Yeah. Um, which, as with a lot of things that seem to have happened since we started Elements for Life, it kind of took on a life of its own. We we started thinking, oh, well, let's have a little look, see what's available, and try and get a feel for premises and that sort of thing. But we were thinking six months ahead. Okay, yep. um, but as seems to be the way, it's not down to us. Um, we like to think that the, the chocolate, the cacao is trying to get out, and we're just the doing its bidding <laughs> um and we went and had a look at one place that a friend had um which just wasn't suitable in the slightest knew about somewhere else made a phone call went to have a look at it and um the roller shutter was opened on the front of the building i'm stood in this entrance to this building and it's just bits of car and engine and oil and rubbish everywhere and it's the least you could imagine a chocolate factory looking like it was just a dilapidated garage and I stood there and I just sort of went I could do something with this I just had yeah. this little thing yeah. instantly go being another one of those sort of light bulb yeah. moments or house moments yeah. and I just sort of thought I can do something with this um, so struck a deal with a farmer um, and then spent six months turning that into what we have which is just 
basically it's a purpose-built facility for us. Mm -hmm. So it's got a production area, it's got office, packing area, and then sort of warehousing, um, which all sounds very grand. It's not huge, but it, it's got everything we need. And we, yeah, my blood, sweat, and tears went into the, into the building. Um, called in lots of favours from lots of friends and people just turned up at the right time again uh, to help with all the different bits at the right time. Just, yeah, everything fell into place. Um, and after six months, we moved in there. And we just last month had our second anniversary um, in the premises, which is affectionately known Willy Wonka Land. Of course, of course. <laughs> what I've been, else? Been, been fortunate to, to visit you and, and sample your wares, and uh, <laughs> it's a brilliant setup. Um, Thank you. And, yeah, and you know, we, we, it's a pleasure to, to to visit. Now, of course, you've got all these wonderful range of products. How do you actually market them? Because in the back in the day, you used to go to trade fairs. Yeah, we did uh, the first couple of years. Absolutely, loads of events. Um, farmers markets and speciality markets all sorts of things and in the run-up in the sort of two months before christmas oh, i lost track of how many events i would do it was just endless um and that was really useful for getting getting the word out getting people to try it and also actually getting feedback on what we yes, were doing and right. getting people's there right in front of us, getting their feedback on what worked what they didn't like what they did like and learning learning more about it actually um and at the same time we were trying to build up um uh, outlets so sort of a great outlet for us is a health food shop because people who go to health food shops they're all chocolate yeah. almost always right. so it's the perfect yeah. um and, and i built a website in the first those first three weeks before we launched i built a website so we were selling stuff through there uh -huh. um and yeah just been building all of that and Two years ago, I suppose we really cut back on the events, mm. um, and now we do we do one event a year, yep. which is the Froom Chocolate Festival. It's on the third Sunday of November, um, and it's our birthday party. It's our unofficial birthday yeah. party, yeah. Um, and it's it's close. It's always a really good event. Um, so it was yeah. So we do one event a year at the moment, and then yeah, it's wholesale to shops outlets other websites and then selling online um, yeah. which yeah um, and it seems to be going quite well yeah. good good well you make heavy use of social media don't you can you speak a little about that fairly heavy use um not as consistent as i'd like to be i think is probably a fair assessment but yeah i i my my main online hub other than our own website seems to be facebook um uh, and a lot of stuff works through there. Um, but I also use Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest a little bit. Um, and I'm I'm getting the hang of it all more and more. Um, and uh, one of the things I really want to do over the next few months is get, get all of that, that side of things running more smoothly and more effectively. But it, it works quite well. We, we've got quite a good following and um, we get we get good comments and feedback and people sharing that. But I've got now I've got the new website which was launched last month. Um, yes. I can do a lot more um, with the way I do stuff online. Um, so I'm, I've got quite a few things planned. Um, so yeah, there should be some interesting things coming coming live over the next next two three weeks. There should be some new things coming along. And certainly over the next couple of months, we, we've got some, I've got some things up my sleeve, shall we say, okay. uh, which right. should help, help help to get the brand out there, get the products out there and get people talking about us a bit more, hopefully. Yeah. We were talking a couple of months ago uh, to Kelly Hungerford. And Kelly Hungerford uh, worked for Pepper Lee, Pepper mm -hmm. Airline, and she was community manager there. And right. a couple of years ago, she branched out on her own and she now helps uh, businesses around the world with communities. Okay. And during, during the course of the discussion, I mentioned the Raw Chocolate Lover Club, and yeah. uh, her eyes lit up. <laughs> I like the sound not, of that. Not only, not only because it was about chocolate, but because you'd not called it the Elements for Life Club. <laughs> you'd actually gone after, you, you actually designed the club around what you do but not directly involved with what you do 
Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. I, I that shift happened about eighteen months ago. Up until then, we had an email newsletter like everybody else, and people signed up and they got one or maybe two emails a month, and it would be a typical email newsletter. And it was well, I did call it the raw chocolate news. Um, but it was Elements for Life, the raw chocolate news. Um, but through talking with some people, I, I sort of, we sort of developed the idea of actually sort of rebranding that almost into the Raw Chocolate Lover Club um, because it is about raw chocolate, people for lo- who love raw chocolate. That's the whole idea. Um, and it's, it's free for people to join. It's, there's no charge, there's nothing like that, but it's... I'd like, and I would like to see it develop into something that's sort of greater than that. And as you say, it's not just about us or about elements for life. Obviously, there's a real part of it is that, but it's about just educating people and entertaining people and keeping people inspired to to play with raw chocolate because that's one of our our, our big missions is to get people really just playing around with raw chocolate having their own adventure having their own raw chocolate adventure and sort of seeing where it goes um because you never know someone out there might become a member of the club they might get one of our kit and a couple of years down the line they might be making raw chocolate and sort of like all over the place and great i would love that right shall we take a quick peek if i can if i'm able to do two things at once <laughs> inside the shop okay uh, okay so we're inside the shop now uh and if you want to describe the uh things that are available okay and the, the, i've got a real temptation to try and point to the screen but no one's <laughs> going to see that <laughs> um so i've kind of broke it down into sort of categories or collections um I suppose at this point, I should say, I've, I've moved the website recently to Shopify, which it, I'm finding to be an amazing platform for e-commerce. Okay. Um, so if anybody is looking to do stuff on an e-commerce site, I highly recommend Shopify. And I've got nothing, no kickback or anything. It's like I'm loving it. That's all. So I've so we've got those six collections, which so, um, we've, we've been lucky enough to win quite a few awards. So I've got a section which mm-hmm. highlights just our award-winning products. Yeah. Uh, one of which is Yummy Scrummy. You'll be pleased to hear. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, um, and then our chocolate moulds, because we've got a big range of chocolate moulds, because they seem to be quite difficult to get hold of. So mm-hmm. and they're a nice, distinct section themselves. Then we've got uh, some drinks and snacks. Um, so that's sort of the Yummy Scrummy, the Chocomiga, and then the hot chocolate drinks. Um, I'm trying to look at your screen, but it's too small, and I, I right. should know it off by heart. <laughs> Um, so okay. then we, and then I've got just the hot chocolate on there as well. So our three varieties of hot chocolate. We've got a couple of gift bags which have the hot chocolate in, um, and then the kits. So we've got our standard kit. We've got a special edition chili kit which uh, has got Wiltshire grown chili from the Wiltshire Chili Farm. Right. Um, so, and then the, sort of the restocking ingredients for for that. Right. So I switch to the kits. Yeah. Um, and then, as, as a fact, so it's kits and gifts. So, because they make a, such a good gift. So, as well as in there, we've got a couple of gift bags one which has got the hot chocolate range, one which is a taster bag with hot chocolate, yummy scrummy, and the nib grinder. And then, our, while there is chocolate, there is hope mug. Um, yes. yeah. An ideal yeah. present for anybody who loves chocolate. I like to think so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I should have had a, one of those mugs with me, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, if. It, you know, I mean, every time I'm on air, I can actually raise a, a cup similar to that, definitely. Ah, uh, no. Is that a hint there, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm right. devices, I'll come over here right. and in. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So, uh, and the products that you talked about, um, the berries and fruit. Yeah, so, I mean... Yeah, I mean, so basically we've got lots of different ingredients that we use. Um, so Yummy Scrummy, for example, is dates and raisins and goji berries and lots of cacao and all sorts of things. So pretty much anything, if we use it, we make it available to sell because yeah. we've got it anyway. So we might as well mm. sell it. And also we know that what we're using is very good quality. So it makes sense to be able to 
get that out there. So, um, so we've got all sorts of ingredients. So we've got the fruits, we've got sort of Brazil nuts and cashew nuts and walnuts and all sorts of things like that. And then we've got some absolutely beautiful um, organic food grade essential oils that come from a company called NHR. who are based in Brighton and mm-hmm. they are just fantastic oils. They do a huge range, but we've got a small selection of ones that we use or that work well with chocolate. Um, we've got Himalayan pink salt, just all sorts of stuff, absolutely all sorts of things. Um, and yeah, all very good. I, I'm certain that they're all very, very good quality. And that's one of the things yeah. that we, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm very particular about what I use. Um, and yeah, we, we always work hard to find good suppliers with a good source. And, uh, uh, and I think the results speak for themselves. Um, we're closing the browser and we're back together. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, the situation now is that you, you become, you, you're established, you have a loyal clientele, but you're now exporting, aren't you? A little bit, yeah. We do, yeah. Um, we do some, um, we've got a couple of sort of wholesale customers in Europe. We've got one in France, one in uh, Sweden. Um, and uh, and then just some personal customers in in various countries in Europe. We've also just last no April it was it went out last month and it went in the April box of a, a food subscription box in Germany called F- the Foodist Healthy Box, which was a a pilot of three thousand bars of yummy scrummy. <laughs> wow <laughs> which um uh was an uh, interesting process of how to make them because everything's very much handmade with what we do we right. we don't have huge equipment and things like that. we have equipment that we need but it is very much a hands-on process with everything we do um and yes it was a, a pallet of yummy scrummy went to germany um and it seems to have gone down well um from what i can tell with my very 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 limited german um verging or non-existent um but the posts that i've seen online seem to be pretty pretty good and the thumbs up emoji yeah. seem to give me a give me a clue that they, they <laughs> <That's love. indication. laughs> right what are your plans for the future um ooh, really just to sort of to build on what we've we've got so far um and since we've been in the premises, it sort of changed what we do. We sort of scaled up in the, the nature of what we, what we do and how we do it. Um, and what I'm in, I'm in the middle of a process of looking at the packaging in particular for Yummy Scrummy and Chocomiga. Um, so sneak preview world. Um, at some point in the next few months, uh, there will be new packaging for definitely for Yummy Scrummy and probably for both of them, um, which... I'm excited about. I'm really excited about because it will just look a lot better. It'll right. sit on the shelf nicer. We've got a fantastic friend called Carlo, who's a, a brilliant illustrator, who lives in Chile, um, and he's going to be. We're going to be bringing his artwork into into our packaging and into our branding, and we're looking at our overall branding and d- direction of where we take things. And so we're yeah, we're looking to evolve everything yes. really to 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 just. To go from we we start off as a home this random idea and this cottage industry at home and now we've got premises and we're sort of a proper business now and so it's like we're sort of getting our sort of everything just right as a brand and as a business to really sort of hopefully have a much bigger impact on the world um, and yeah yes. just looking to sell more chocolate sell more chocolate get more people making more chocolate and get more people smiling as a result of their eating their chocolate rather than being ashamed of the fact that they're eating chocolate. Because there's too many people who go, oh, I'm, I'm about to have some chocolate. Oh, naughty me. It's like, <laughs> why? Ah, it's because you're eating the wrong sort. <laughs> we, we've certainly got the message to and where there's chocolate, there's hope. And Absolutely. It's been, a, it's been a pleasure to uh, to talk, and we must be grateful to Phil Hendick and Roland Millwood of the Wiltshire Business mm-hmm. Club. Absolutely. Mentioning these sessions, and yep. you said you've been involved there a long time. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And I know them both quite well, and um, yeah, to, to speak to them one way or another, usually online these days. And um, yeah, they've done an awful lot to help businesses in the area, definitely. So, yeah. definitely, so, big, big up to them. Indeed, indeed. Uh, if you'd like to say thank you to everybody who's joined us, mm-hmm. because this is going out on video on oh. the weekend. Excellent.
Um, Excellent. Yeah. So thank you to everybody who joined us live tonight. Um, we hope you've enjoyed the presentation. The, the beauty of it is that you've seen uh, the product range. Uh, we've not done any selling, but you've seen how wonderful the product range is. <laughs> and you can tell that I'm a fan and Gillick is a fan. And in fact, everybody <laughs> who comes across uh, Elements for Life chocolate uh, is bowled over by it. And I wish you every success. Thank you. You all every success, Dan. And it's been a pleasure talking tonight. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you.